Right now, Ukraine is preparing to launch a major counteroffensive push against Russia. Western allies have given billions of dollars of military support and financial aid, but Ukrainian President Zelensky says his country needs more and different weapons. My next guest has just made the trip to Ukraine, where he met directly with President Zelensky. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham joins us now from London. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thank you. All right, before we get to that, I want to talk about your reaction to the budget deal as we now understand it, because based on your tweets, you do not think that the defense spending part of this is a good deal because it essentially gives the president what he was asking for in his budget when it comes to defense spending. You know, well, number one, I respect Kevin McCarthy. I want to raise the debt ceiling. It'd be irresponsible not to do it. I want to control spending. I'd like to have a smaller IRS. I'd like to claw back the unused COVID money. And I know you can't get the perfect, but what I will not do is adopt the Biden defense budget and call it a success. Kevin said that the defense uh, is fully funded. If we adopt the Biden defense budget, it increases defense spending below inflation. 3.2% increase in defense is below inflation. The Biden defense budget takes the Navy from 298 ships to 291 at a time when China is going to increase their Navy by almost a third. So the Biden defense budget was a joke before, and if we adopt it as Republicans, we will be doing a great disservice to the party of Ronald Reagan. The biggest winner of the Biden defense budget is China because they'll have a, small, a bigger Navy uh, and it will be Putin. There's nothing in the budget for Biden uh, to help Ukraine win a war that they're on the verge of driving the Russians out. So I like Kevin a lot, but don't tell me that the Biden defense budget fully funds the military. We've attacked it for a year as Republicans because it takes the Navy in decline at a time we need a larger Navy to contain China. The overmatch with China China is real, the Biden defense budget makes it even worse for us. So I look forward to the details, but if you send me the Biden defense budget to the United States Senate and declare it fully funds the military, you will have a hard uh, time with me. Uh, I like that you edited yourself for Sunday television. I could see where you're going yeah, there, but, but does that mean that you would be a no? Because you obviously sound very concerned about the default, <laughs> the, the default portion of this. Would you be a no overall? I am not going to do a deal that marginally reduces the number of IRS agents in the future at the expense of sinking the Navy. The Biden defense budget takes the Navy from 298 to mm -hmm. 291 ships. The Navy suggests that we need 373 ships to deal with the threats we face as a nation. How do you get to 373 ships if you're spending below inflation? That's just the Navy. The Air Force is in the same uh, world. Listen, this is sequestration potentially 2.0. In 2011, my good friend Mitch McConnell negotiated a deal with Joe Biden that have virtually destroyed the Defense Department in the name of raising the debt ceiling. If this is another round of sequestration, not only will I vote no, I will not be intimidated by June 5th. This is Memorial Day weekend. We're celebrating those who died for our country. I am a Republican from the Reagan camp. Ronald Reagan would not do this to our military. The defense team of Joe Biden, I've lost faith in a long time ago. I've been making light of the Biden budget as being an adequate a win for China. And if you ask me now to swallow it because of the debt ceiling, you can forget it. The number one job of every member of Congress should be to defend the nation. And the Biden defense budget does not do it. Kevin has a hard job. I like him a lot. But my good friend John McCain voted for sequestration in 2011, thinking we would never do the cuts that we actually did. Two years later, he says it's the worst vote he ever made. We're doing the same thing all over again in the name of raising the debt ceiling. We should raise the debt ceiling, but we should not cripple the military's ability to defend the nation uh, as a trade-off. Mm -hmm. Spending below inflation is not fully funding the military. Cutting the size of the Navy only helps Helps China. All right, I want to make sure that we get to where you've been uh, in meeting with President yeah. Zelensky there in Ukraine. Um, they're gearing up for a counteroffensive. Um, any hope or any thoughts that there are any diplomatic efforts in the offing? Because uh, the Council on Foreign Relations writes this, the Ukrainian public overwhelmingly supports reclaiming every inch of Ukrainian territory, including Crimea. Putin insists that any peace talks recognize Russia's claim to Crimea and the Ukrainian <laughs> oblasts of Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk, and Zaporizhia. So, 
The Ukrainians, rightfully, they want their land back. Putin doesn't want to give them any of it. He seems willing to yeah. expend lives endlessly on both sides of this thing. How does it end? Yeah. Well, here's how it ends. Uh, uh, you, I want to end the war in Ukraine by defeating Putin. The counteroffensive is afoot right now. Uh, in the last 400 and something days, the Ukrainians have defied every expectation. They've weakened and bloodied the Russian army inside of Ukraine. I expect major gains in the coming days and weeks. The Ukrainians uh, have had a weapon called the Storm Shadow provided by the British that's wreaking havoc on the Russians. They need longer, longer range rockets called ATACMs, and they need cluster munitions. Uh, to defeat the Russians. I think they can expel Russia from Ukraine. I want the war to end, but in 2014, we did a deal with Putin, giving him the Crimea. What happened? He invades to try to take the whole country. If you want to end the war in Ukraine, which I do, defeat Putin. I want to end it so we don't have more war. If you let Putin get away with this, China will take Taiwan. I want it out of Afghanistan, but I didn't want to give the country back to the Taliban. So to all the smart people out there, the best thing you can do is give Ukraine the ability to evict the Russians, to liberate their territory. They're not asking for one soldier. They're asking for weapons and technology. And it is in our national security interest to make sure they can beat Putin. And they are on the verge of driving the Russians out. So we need to keep helping them. All of our allies need to be all in and helping Ukraine. They can win this. They can liberate their territory with American help. And nobody's talked about how we're going to help Ukraine win against Russia. I am talking about it. They can do it. They're on the verge of a major counteroffensive that will that needs support. Well, let me ask you about this quickly, because Republicans and Democrats on the Hill have openly expressed concerns about our inability to help other places that need us. Taiwan, we've got billions in back-ordered yeah, weaponry yeah. and those kinds of things. Um, Defense News says this, Ukraine's consumption of U.S.-supplied materiel is outstripping the capacity of American defense term firms to quickly replenish it. Center for Strategic and International Studies report last month found that the U.S. defense industrial base is unprepared for a notional battle with China over Taiwan. How do we manage that? Yeah. Well, number one, you don't pass a defense budget below inflation. We are overmatched. We do need more weapons. But letting Putin dismember Ukraine and get away with industrial-sized war crimes gives you more war, not less. If Putin is allowed to win when he can lose if we do the right thing, there goes Taiwan. If you don't see the connection between Ukraine and China, you're missing a lot. We need more defense spending. They're right about the weapons. We need to increase our arsenal. We have multiple threats. Let's help Ukraine defeat Putin, end the war on favorable terms in the Ukraine. You'll make China less likely to invade Taiwan. The defense budget they're proposing as part of this deal makes it impossible for us to do the things we need to do. You're reducing defense spending at a time we need more of it. Senator, uh, we know your position well, and we wish you safe Thank travels you. back to the U.S. See you soon. Thank you. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.